Today's gospel is just filled with symbolism and meaning, so let's go through that gospel almost verse by verse. Jesus is talking to his disciples near Caesarea Philippi. That's in the north of Israel, and traditionally, it's identified as the place where the Jordan River surges up from an underground passage and creates a pool. Right over that is a cave, and it was a cave where the pagans used to worship one of their pagan gods, Pan. And the the Jewish people, they thought uh, this was a place of evil, and they even called it the gateway to the underworld, the gateway to hell, is what they're basically saying. So keep that in mind when we talk about this. First of all, Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Simon, that's his original name, says you're the Christ. You're the, that means you're the Messiah, the anointed one. And Jesus says, this is not coming from you, it's coming from the Father. So notice, Jesus is already saying that Simon has been given a gift, that gift of faith. We all receive a gift of faith, but that gift is different in each person. Pope John Paul II, when he wrote his pastoral letter preparing for the year 2000, wrote that each person has a different gift, and it seems as if some have not received the full portion yet. It's a real consolation because we're only responsible for what we can do. So what happens if your kids aren't practicing the faith? Well, even though they grew up in a Catholic family, maybe they haven't received the full gift yet. And maybe they can only fully embrace it in God's time, not our time. And so we place them in God's hands, we pray for them, but we don't try to control the situation. Because the more we try to control it, the more they'll push away. So we continuously invite them. And sometimes inviting them, we use a little bit of Catholic guilt. Uh, Christmas Vigil Mass. I don't want a Christmas present this year. You come to Mass with me. That'll be my present. (laughs) But we make sure the guilt is not slathered too thick. So Peter, Simon at, at this point, has received this gift of faith. And from now on, he's going to have a new name, Peter. Now, in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew loves Peter. He has him appearing one time after another. Even remember that time that they're in the boat and Peter has the courage to get out and walk on the water? It doesn't last too long, but it shows his personality, a bit impetuous, man of great faith. He's going to be the rock on which the church is built. Now, a few years ago, I was talking to an evangelical, And he said to me that my pastor said, the word Peter means a little pebble. Doesn't make sense at all. Jesus is saying, I'm gonna build my church on this rock. So it's gotta be that rocky foundation. Now admittedly in the Gospel of John, when Jesus says you're the rock, it never really defines why. And the thing that you have to know, in Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke, It's kephas, but the gospel was written in Greek. Kephas, Cephas, did you ever hear of hydrocephalic? In Greek, it means head. So what is John saying? Rock, head. What is he saying about Peter? A bit thick. And yet, Peter is chosen to be that foundation. Peter's not perfect. You heard it at the end of the reading, didn't you? You're an obstacle. Get behind me, Satan. And yet God can choose people who are not perfect to do his will. Isn't that a consolation? We all have a chance, as long as we respond as best we can. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Now, in the Old Testament, the kings belong to God the Father. The keys of life, the keys of death, and the keys of rain, precipitation. Remember how dry Israel is. In the New Testament, Jesus has the keys and he's giving them to Peter. 
that idea that Peter will be the vicar of Christ. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the power that the rabbis had. Rabbis could decide which laws applied and which laws didn't. St. Peter is being made the chief rabbi of this new church. And the gates of the netherworld shall not pre prevail against you. Remember what I said about that cave overlooking the pond? That was considered the gateway to hell, the gateway to the underworld. And what Jesus is saying to Peter, I'm going to protect you. Now, what does all this teach us? Matthew wants to remind us how important it is to have someone who can lead us. Admittedly, the office of Pope, they really didn't understand it fully till around the 4th or 5th century. They knew there was a bishop in Rome, and he was a special bishop, but they don't start using words like Pope or Vicar of Christ until much later. But right from the beginning, God chose people to guide us. And what is our obligation? At the very least, respect and prayer. Some people tell me nowadays, I don't like Pope Francis. He, he's a bad pope. Do you realize what they're saying? They're saying the Holy Spirit made a mistake? That's a lot to say. And it was, it's as true with Pope Benedict, who was very different than Pope Francis. The Holy Spirit chose Pope Benedict. And very often, the Holy Spirit will choose one to balance the next one. One a little bit this way, the other next one a little bit that way. But it's the same Holy Spirit. And that's where our prayer and our respect comes in. That even if we don't necessarily like the way he does things or uh, what, he's, what he says in this moment or the next, we've got to respect him. We've got to respect him. St. Francis did that very often. Remember, St. Francis was not a priest. And he would march into a village, and everyone would tell him all the gossip about their local past pastor. That he has, a, he has a woman that he's, you know, and this and that, he's stealing our money. And Francis would go in front of the priest, kneel down, and kiss his hands. Because he wanted to respect the priesthood, if, if not that particular person. And by doing that, we're saying something about our belief that the Holy Spirit really is guiding us. Where is the church going? Wherever the Spirit wants. And we trust. We trust that whoever the next Pope will be will be God's choice. Now, here in Baltimore, how can we apply this to our bishop and the fact of parishes being closed and stuff like that? Do you have to agree with the choice he made for which parish stays open and closes? No. Do we have to respect him? As much as we would respect anyone who has been sent to us from God, whether it be the big boss or the bosses around us, that the way we will heal this world is not through division and judgmentalism, it's through loving people into healing. One last thought today. Today is the Feast of St. Dominic, and a lot of times on the Feast of St. Dominic, they'll invite a Franciscan over to their house to preach. And we do the same on the Feast of St. Francis, invite a Dominican over. But they're the order of preachers. We don't have a shot. They give a 25-minute homily and quote the fathers of the church, and what does a Franciscan do? He says, we really should love God and sits down in a pile of ashes. <laughs> I'm not sure which is the better homily. <laughs>